Earlier this week, Apple released iPadOS 13.4, an update that finally brings with it full support for Bluetooth mice and trackpads for your iPad. This includes the Magic Mouse 2, the Magic Trackpad, the Surface Mouse, and pretty much any Bluetooth mouse or trackpad that you can think of. Being someone who works a lot on my iPad, I think this was the missing piece of the puzzle that's gonna have a lot of people thinking, why aren't I working on an iPad? What is up my friends, it's Ray back here and today we're going to be talking about the latest iPad OS 13.4 update and how it could very well be a game changer for your workflow. In fact, if you primarily work on a laptop already, it might even have you wanting to switch over to an iPad. Before we get started, I want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever I live stream or upload new videos. I put a lot of work into the content that you guys see here on my channel, and I really do appreciate all of the love and support that has been coming in from you guys. Like, it's been truly amazing, especially lately. Like, you guys have been my zen. You guys have been, like, there for me, and it's been awesome. So I really do appreciate that love and support. So, if you want to use a mouse or a trackpad with your iPad, let's start with a brief tutorial. First, you're going to need to update to the latest software, iPadOS 13.4. Then you're going to head over to the Bluetooth settings and put your mouse or trackpad in pairing mode. From there, you just tap the device when it pops up and you're good to go. It's literally as easy as that. After you're all paired up, there's going to be a little cursor that appears on your screen and that is going to act as your pointer. Now you're going to be able to poke around, scroll, left click, right click, copy, paste, and everything else that you would be able to do with a regular computer you can do now here on your iPad. Unfortunately, until the new Magic Keyboard with Trackpad comes out in May, I won't have a trackpad to test out with my iPad, but from the videos that I've seen of it in action, it looks like it works really, really well with the gestures and all of that. It's pretty much like how a trackpad works on a Mac. I have, however, been using a Magic Mouse 2 and a Surface Mobile Mouse with my iPad to test out this update, and both of them work extremely well with no issues. As you would expect from the Magic Mouse 2, it's a bit more rich in features because it has that touch sensitive surface so you can use similar gestures to that of the trackpad like swipes tabs and scrolls it feels very fitting and very natural on ipad os because it's essentially a touch first platform so the magic mouse works very well and i assume the trackpad works just as well Another great option that I tested out, as I mentioned earlier, is the Surface Mobile Mouse. You wouldn't expect that, but it works very well with the iPad. The Surface Mobile Mouse is a cheaper $30 or so mouse that actually I bought for my Dell XPS laptop a few months ago. It's arguably one of my favorite Bluetooth mice out there. It feels great in your hands, it performs very well, and not to mention, it's nice and slim to just toss in your bag and not have to worry about it and just go. It's a very basic mouse, but if you want to dive into the iPad's new abilities and don't want to spend as much as like a Magic Mouse 2 or a trackpad, you can get this one and I definitely highly recommend checking it out. So, is this a game changer for the iPad workflow? I would say it is without a doubt. Having mouse and trackpad support brings the iPad even closer to replacing a traditional computer than ever before. And it actually leads to the question, do you even need to buy a traditional computer anymore nowadays? These tablets, especially the iPad Pro, are powerhouses in terms of performance and the flexibility that they bring to the table. It really can't be matched by regular laptops. You can touch the screen, you can use the Apple Pencil, you can use a keyboard, and now you can use a mouse or a trackpad in addition to all of that. It's pretty incredible. As a video producer, I love the freshness that the iPad brings to my workflow, but I will admit the one thing that was missing from the iPad experience was precision, especially when you're editing photos or videos. The Apple Pencil is great and unique, but you really have to have somewhat of a steady hand for it. So for mobile videos and ones with not a lot of cuts in it, it was fine but for more advanced projects, it was still a bit more tedious for me. In my opinion, there's no better input method than a keyboard or a mouse for editing videos. But of course, everyone's use case is going to be different. So whatever your workflow looks like, I'm sure the iPad and its ever-growing flexibility can handle it with ease. If you're editing spreadsheets, if you're editing music, if you're editing video, editing whatever it is, or like modifying things, PDFs, documents, whatever it could be, my goodness, guys, the iPad just like eats all these tasks for lunch. It's pretty wild. 
Anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it always helps out the channel. You know the drill by now. A lot of you guys really seem to be enjoying these types of videos that I've been doing more of lately, and I'm really happy about that. Like, I want to start sharing more behind the scenes, more like into my video production knowledge. There's a lot of cool things that you can create with the iPad, and I definitely want to talk more about that. So enough bantering for this video. Until the next one, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.